But uh, welcome once again. It's so good uh, to have you with us here at Living Rooms tonight. And uh, if you've been following what we're doing uh, over the last uh, couple of months, you'll know that we've been visiting the farm and the sheep farm in particular. And uh, last week uh, we concluded that series and um, part of it was focused on Jeremiah, uh, who was a, a priest and he was called to be a prophet of God, but he was also called to be a shepherd of the people of God. And boy, did he have a difficult task. Yeah. So I've been reading through the book of Jeremiah. And uh, so I want us to stay there. And we're going to read tonight from Jeremiah chapter 6, please. The book of Jeremiah chapter 6. Reading from verse 9. Jeremiah 6, verse 9. This is what the Lord Almighty says. <laughs> the Lord Almighty, El Shaddai. I don't know about you, but when you read through the Old Testament in particular, and uh, so often we read these verses, particularly in the prophecies, uh, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Are you like me? You kind of go, oh, <laughs> what's God going to say? It must be really important. So here's what he says to the people of Judah. Let them glean the remnant of Israel as thoroughly as a vine. <coughs> Pass your hand over the branches again like one gathering grapes. To whom can I speak and give warning? Who will listen to me? Their ears are closed so that they cannot hear. The word of the Lord is offensive to them. They find no pleasure in it. And down to verse 16. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not walk in it. That's a sad end to that verse. But we will not walk in it. Let's just pray. Dear Lord, we're coming before you tonight. And we come and we pray that for all of us, you will find us to have open hearts. Open hearts to receive your word. Lord, we thank you that you speak so powerfully down through the generations. And you're speaking today. Help us to recognize, Lord, when you are speaking. And help us to be obedient. To be obedient children. And to move in our lives to follow Jesus out of hearts of love for all that he has done for us. And it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 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 Well, actually, if you read through the whole of uh, Jeremiah chapter 6, it's a pretty tough read. It's, it's quite a dis distressing read. And in fact, uh, the whole of the book of Jeremiah is, is quite a challenging read. Uh, the city of Jerusalem is under attack. The Babylonian army has actually surrounded the city and they have built their siege ramps up against the city wall. What they're trying to do is starve the people and break through the walls and then come in and, uh, and take captive. Uh, not in a very nice way. The people of Jerusalem, because they have refused to surrender to King Nebuchadnezzar. And of course, when, when 
I tell you something like that, probably your automatic uh, question is why? <laughs> why is this happening? And we find the answer in verses 6 and 7. In the second half of verse 6, this is the Lord Almighty speaking. This city must be punished. It is filled with oppression. As a well pours out its water, so she pours out her wickedness, violence and destruction resound in her. Her sickness and wounds are ever before me. <clears throat> it, it's such a sad picture. It's a picture of wickedness, violence and destruction of sickness and wounds. And, and this is in the city of God. And God is looking for the opposite. He's, he's looking for love to be shown and compassion and healing and salvation. And all that he sees actually is, is wickedness and destruction. And well, was the situation completely hopeless at the 11th hour? Well, in verse number 8, here's what the Lord says. Take warning, O Jerusalem. Take warning, or I will turn away from you. So th th there's even at this last minute, where the city's in peril and their lives are in peril, there's this opportunity for them to turn up to God. And when we turn to God, he saves. When we turn to him with all our hearts, I think that's really what God is saying through the prophet Jeremiah. There's still time left to turn to me. But the verdict comes down to verse number 10, which you've read already. To whom can I speak and give warning? Who will listen to me? Their ears are closed so that they cannot hear. The word of the Lord is offensive to them. That's pretty sad, isn't it? The importance of listening to God. And I suppose if I asked all of you individually, you said, yeah, I want to hear God's voice. I want to listen to God. But then if I ask you, when did God last speak to you? When did you last hear his voice? That might be harder to answer, actually. When the, the reality is that God wants to speak into our lives day after day after day. I've, I've got a wee story to tell you. <laughs> On Thursday afternoon, Thursday was beautiful, beautiful if you remember. And uh, we've got this lovely family that stay next door to us, you know. And um, the, the children, some of the children were out in the garden. And I think V, my wife, had been out in the garden. And uh, I think she'd been spotted and then she'd disappeared. And then after a little while, there was a, a little voice uh, shouting over the fence, V, where are you? V, where are you? Now, by this time, V had gone into the garage. And I know for sure that she heard, V, where are you? And she had two choices to make, right? <laughs> uh, one was that she could ignore the little boy who was shouting her name and pretend that she wasn't there and stayed hidden. Or... She could actually come out and go and speak to him, right? And, and actually, that's what she did. And he was blessed, and she was blessed. They had a chat together. And that kind of reminded me of uh, the dilemma that Adam and Eve faced in the Garden of Eden. Eve, Eden. And uh, it's in Genesis chapter 3, and you remember that... Uh, they were hiding because of their sin and uh, they had a guilty conscience and they just didn't want to face God anymore. And then the Lord God comes to the garden in the cool of the day and what does he say? Adam, where are you? <laughs> where are you, Adam? And uh, you see, God is speaking. And we don't always want to hear his voice. We don't always want to hear his voice. 
and we might choose to hide. And in the 6th century before Christ, Jeremiah chapter 6, God is speaking to the nation of Israel through the prophet Jeremiah, but their ears were closed. They did not want to hear what God was saying. I think the message from this is that we all need to hear the word of God. And we all need to learn to obey the word of God. And the word of God is amazing. <laughs> Did you know it's dangerous? Did you know it's dynamite? Did you know it's revolutionary? It speaks about us about our pride, our sin, and our selfishness. And God wants to do a surgical operation in our hearts and in our lives. That's what he wants to do through his word. And sometimes that can be quite painful, but it is life-changing. And it's counter-cultural. The Lord says, my ways are not your ways. And his kingdom way is not this world's way. And God, through his word, I believe, wants to speak to us often. He actually wants to speak to us every day of our lives to shape us to be more like Jesus. And God's word is full of hope. It's full of promises. And God speaks about the big picture but he also speaks into the details of our lives. How do I hear the voice of God? Well, I don't think it's complicated, actually. <laughs> we hear the voice of God through reading the Word of God. <laughs> you expected me to say that, didn't you? We hear his God, God's voice through his Word. And God's Word should be our daily diet. Just as important as eating and drinking is feeding on the Word of God. Now, I can't say it often enough. Um, but the trouble is that if we don't like what we read, we come, become deaf. Death to the Word of God. That's the reality as well, isn't it? And that's what's happening here in the land of Israel. And the problem is that if we don't like what we hear in the Word of God and, and our ears become closed and we become deaf, here's what happens next. God stops speaking to us. You see, he won't bypass things. He won't take us on to a next stage in our journey until we've learned to obey him in the points that he has been speaking to us already. Because that's really important in the shaping of our lives. And God speaks to us primarily through his word. And we've had several um, instances of that tonight already. And I'm so glad of the times that God has spoken to me through his word. He speaks in other ways, of course. He can speak through visions. He can speak through dreams. He speaks through prophetic words, through words of knowledge. But I believe that God speaks primarily through his word. And what an abundance that we have in the word of God. And God wants to speak to us through his Rima word. And that is, I believe that when we read the Word of God day by day, very often he takes what we're reading and by his Spirit he speaks into our circumstances, the circumstances that we're facing just at that time. And sometimes that takes the Word of God completely out of context. And that's bad theology. I understand that's bad theology. But God wants to speak, doesn't he? And God will speak any way that he wants to, to catch our attention. Yeah. 
And God was choosing to speak to his people through a man called Jeremiah, who was very brave, who was very courageous, who suffered so much that he persevered and he kept on going and he would not give up because he wanted the people of God to hear the word of God because if they did not hear the word of God and did not obey the word of God, the consequences were disastrous. And sadly, the consequences did end up to be disastrous for the people of Jerusalem. And then God gives the people a visual aid through Jeremiah. And he says to the people, go to the crossroads. Go to the crossroads and stand and look. Okay? The nation is in perilous danger. There's choices to be made. There's different directions that they can go at this particular point. As Jeremiah is coming and bringing the word of God to them. And there's very important choices to make. But how are they to know which choice to make? And God says, ask. Ask and walk. God's saying, ask me. And then walk in the direction that I'm going to give to you. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it, and here's the promise from, from God, and you will find rest for your souls. And the response was, we're not going to listen. Verse 17. We don't want to hear what you've got to say, Jeremiah. We don't want to hear what you've got to say, God. We want to go our own way. We want to live our lives our own way. Don't speak to us anymore. We can look after ourselves. And as you read through the book of Jeremiah, it's very interesting. Uh, the, 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 the city of Jerusalem falls. Some of the people are allowed to stay in the land. Uh, and, and then the, 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 the person that King Nebuchadnezzar raises up to look after the, the, the land of Israel. Uh, he's assassinated and some of the people uh, go into Egypt, they, fly, they, they, they flee away into Egypt and the Babylonian army chases after them and conquers Egypt. And they die at the hands of King Nebuchadnezzar. But right up until the end there is the opportunity for them to turn to God. But they wouldn't do it. You know what they did? They worshipped the Queen of Heaven. Here's what they did. They used to make cakes shaped like the Queen of Heaven. And that's what they worshipped. And they poured out their drink offerings to the Queen of Heaven. Can you believe that they thought that that was going to save them? When the God of Heaven was just within their touch. And they refused to believe. I really believe this is a, a powerful message for today. The people then were standing at the crossroads. And I believe that today we are standing at a crossroads. This world is standing at a crossroads. This nation is standing at a crossroads. The people are standing at the crossroads. There's lots of concerns. Every way you turn there are concerns. There's concerns about global warming, you know, and what's going to happen to our planet. And uh, I brought this book tonight, and Andrew Jones gave it to me because it's all about a shepherd from Cumbria. And it's a really interesting read because we've been doing this series on, on sheep farming. <clears throat> but this guy's called James Raybanks, and uh, he farms in a in a hill farm in, uh, in Cumbria. And it's a very traditional farm. And he's become so concerned about the change in farming that the tearing up of the, the hedgerows, 
the creation of bigger fields and the use of more fertilizer and the grounds becoming sick and, and, and all the, the wildlife and the birds have disappeared so that we can produce more food more cheaply so that we can eat more and it costs less so that we can spend our money on other stuff. The difficulty with that which he has observed over the years is that wildlife has suffered. The ground has suffered and the ground has been sick. We can't grow the crops anymore. And so what he is doing in his farm is he's reverting back to the old ways. Yeah. And then I was reading in my daily bread readings this week and I stopped in my tracks when I read this article about a guy called Tony Reno, Renaudo, who's a, a, an Australian missionary and he's worked in Africa for 33 years. And he's been sharing Jesus there, but he's been helping the people to combat deforestation. You see, what they have done in large swathes of Africa is chop down the indigenous trees to try and grow more crops. And it hasn't worked. They've chopped down the trees and all they've done is that they've produced more desert. And they've not been able to grow crops. And Tony Renaudo came along, an agronomist, and he saw these little shrubs and, and, and he realised that they weren't dead. And so he watered them and he trained them so that they became trees again. And all over Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, he's been teaching farmers how to do this. And, and, and I found the figures were absolutely stunning. That he's inspired hundreds of thousands of farmers to save their fa failing farms by restoring nearby forests and reversing soil erosion. Do you know the area they're talking about? 50,000 square kilometers and they've planted 200 million trees are not planted but they've planted some but they've also regrown 200 million trees they've reversed the desert desertification of sub-saharan africa and what it has done is that they have doubled their crops they've doubled their income and there's food being produced for an additional 2.5 million people per year. Isn't that amazing? You know, and I'm reading the word of God here tonight. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is. And actually, I'm beginning to think that some of the stuff that we've been doing Maybe it hasn't been just such a good way after all. And maybe God does actually know best. And you're maybe here tonight and maybe not, you know, the global picture is what's important to you. Maybe not what's happening in farming is important to you. But maybe there's other things in your life that's concerning you. Other things that are troubling you. Personal things that are troubling you. And you're struggling at the moment. And we come to the word of God and what does God say? When we feel as if we're under attack. God is saying, stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient path. You know, at the centre of a crossroads, there's a cross. Isn't there? There is a cross. And the message of the Bible, the message of the gospel is to take us back to the cross. The cross of 2,000 years ago. That ancient cross that's all but been forgotten today. And I think God would remind us in his word about the cross. And he wants to take us back to the crossroads and look. And even in churches today, I think there's not a lot talked about the cross anymore. 
But God wants to take us to the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask where the good way is. What is God's way? What is God's direction for our lives? What is really important? You know, I'm so glad that God took me to the place of the cross all these years ago and opened my eyes to his love and to his son. You know, I didn't have any visions. I didn't have any dreams. But I heard about the cross and I got on my knees and I asked Jesus into my heart and into my life. If I'm being absolutely honest, I was disappointed. I, I thought something amazing was going to happen when I asked Jesus into my heart. I thought, is there going to be a blinding light? <laughs> <You know? laughs> is the house going to shake? Am I, am I going to know something tangible that it didn't? But all I can tell you is that when I had an encounter with Jesus Christ and I asked him into my heart and my life because I had been brought to the cross, it changed my life forever. And, uh, I, you know, I'll never forget, I will never forget uh, when I was taken by, the, by my friends at school and, and, and I was pointed to the cross of the Lord Jesus. And they got me to start reading the gospel and, and, and the account of, of what Jesus did on the cross. And, and I got to discover the sufferings that he went through. You know, the torture that he experienced the abuse and the rejection and hanging on that cross for hours and end. And instead of spitting hatred, he spoke words of love. You know, that had a profound effect in my life that has never left me, never ever left me. And, and it means so much to me today, the love of Jesus for me. How much God has loved me. It shaped my life. It's undone me. I owe everything to Jesus. Absolutely everything. You know, I'm glad that God, when I was a 15 year old boy, God led me to the crossroads to cause me to take a look at the cross of his son. That's where God wants us to go. Whether it's individually, or whether it's nationally, or whether it's internationally, I believe that we're all taken to the cross of Christ and we understand what God has done for us there and we respond to it. It changes everything. You maybe think I'm simplistic in what I'm telling you. But I believe it with all my heart that if this world is going to be changed, it starts with me and it starts with you. Individually, God has got to change our hearts and change our lives. And we need to be revived. Our nation needs to be revived. This world needs to experience a revival of God. That's going to be the hope of this world. And no matter how hard we try without Christ, we are never going to achieve it. God wants to take us to the crossroads. Give us a look at the cross. To experience his son. To experience his salvation. To have our thinking and our ways changed. And here's what it says. Where the good way is. And Jesus says, I am the way. The truth and the life. If you want truth, come to Jesus. If you want to find life, real life, eternal life, come to the cross of Jesus. Yeah. If we want direction in our lives, come to the cross of Jesus.
I am the way, said the Lord Jesus. And the final line of the, the reading tonight is, if we, if we come to the way and walk in it, you will find rest for your souls. We're living in a time of distress. Apparently mental illness is out of control. People have got worries and people have got concerns. And once again, I believe the answer is in the cross of Christ. And when we come to Jesus and put our trust in Jesus, he says, I will give rest to your souls. Yeah. Here's what he says in Matthew chapter 11. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, the Lord Jesus wants to walk in life alongside us. Yeah, that we might be yoked to him, that we might be connected to him. He wants to show us the way. And when he shows us the way, we go the right way. And he carries our anxieties. And he says, don't worry. I'll give you my peace. It's going to be okay. Yeah. He's a wonderful saviour. It's such a simple message. Such a simple message. And God was speaking to his people then. And he speaks to us today. And those of you who are gathered with me tonight know this message. But do we really believe it with all our hearts? That the answer to everything actually is to be found in Jesus, the Son of God, the living Son of God. And he says, come to me. Come to me. And I will give you rest. Yeah. Let's just pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. And we thank you that you're speaking. You speak to us today through your word, by your spirit. You get so much that you want to say. And yet, Lord, if we're being honest, there is so little that we seem to hear. So, Lord, we come to you tonight and, and, and we just simply say, Lord, keep speaking to us. Put that desire in our hearts to hear what you have to say. No matter how hard it might be, no matter how costly it might be, no matter how sacrificial it might be. Lord, if we're absolutely honest, we're not that much different from the people of Israel all these years ago. We've come to enjoy the kind of style of life that we live right now. The things that we have, the things that we do, the things that we enjoy. But Lord, how much really in our hearts are we prepared to offer to you? Lord, would you revolutionize our lives? Make us to be wholly dependent upon you. Make us above everything else to want to be going your way, to be walking your way, 
to be living the kind of revolutionary, countercultural life that we see in the Lord Jesus. Bringing the good news and the love of God into this world and into this generation. Lord, would you take us and would you use us would you kindle a fire in our hearts that we've maybe never experienced for years, if we're being quite honest? Take us back to the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, to a crossroads in our lives. Lord, maybe we prepare to take up the baton that is Jesus' way. For he said, I am the way to follow in his footsteps and to experience your blessing in our lives. So Lord, we come and we just commit our ways to you now. Refresh us Renew as we ask, Lord, in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen.